Hello, I'm going to be talking to you about linear regression. The topic of linear regression is all about making predictions, and we make predictions all the time. Consider, for example, the fact that when you purchase life insurance, or if you buy a stock, or if you end up um, choosing to attend a college, all that's going to be influenced by your predictions. How long you might live, uh, how well the stock might do, how well you might do at that college, or the likelihood of their accepting you. Let's say you work at Mira University as an admissions officer, and a student contacts you, says he's deciding whether or not to attend your university. He doesn't want to spend time and money at your university, he says, unless he's likely to do well. So he asks you what GPA is likely to earn at your university. Now keep in mind, you don't know anything about this person. So the best you can do is bring up on your computer screen a histogram of how people do at your university. And you notice that the mean college GPA is 3.0. So you tell the person, if I don't know anything else about you, uh, except that you might be here at our university, the best I can guess is that your college GPA is going to be a 3. And I know that there's lots of room for error here. Uh, you might end up with a 2.4, and that's a difference of negative 0.6. Or you might end up with a 3.8, and that's a difference of positive 0.8. But if I don't know anything about you, the best I can guess is that you'll perform average. Now, if I guess that you're going to perform average and the variance is rather small, that is, it's a narrow distribution, there might not be very much error in my prediction. However, if this is a distribution that's really wide, that is, there's lots of variance, my prediction could be really off if I predict that you do average and you're way out here or way out there. So, you know, there's we could talk about the term variance, which is just a numerical way of describing how wide the distribution is. The larger the variance in distribution, the more error I'm likely to have if I simply predict you do average. So you tell this person who you're talking to on the phone, maybe you could tell me something uh, that would help me make a better prediction of your uh, college GPA. And trying to be helpful, the person on the other side of the phone says, well, I'm five foot nine, my hair is brown, my high school GPA is 3.35, and I like to eat pizza. Say, well, let's focus on your high school GPA. So um, you, you send out a survey to your uh, college alumni. You ask them their high school GPA and their college GPA. Uh, you send it to a sample of them. And let's say you get back the results. And this is uh, a scattergram, or a scatter plot. And this scatter plot, each dot represents an individual. This person had a low high school GPA and a low college GPA. This person up here has a very good high school GPA and a very good college GPA. So looking at the scatter plot, we can try to figure out how well this student's going to do in college. Uh, he tells you that uh, he has a 3.35, and so you share with them that if you have a 3.35, well, take a look. People who responded to your survey with around a 3.35, their college GPA was between 2.8 and 3.8. So you let them know. I think that's probably how you're likely going to do. Well, the person you talk to says, well, what about my friend Sherry? She has a high school GPA of 3.8, and I noticed that your scatter plot, nobody had a high school GPA of 3.8. What do you do in that case? Well, actually, you say, you can draw what's known as a regression line, a best-fitting line that goes through the midst of the dots. Using that regression line, you can actually predict how Sherry's going to do. With a high school GPA of 3.8, she's likely to end up with a uh, college GPA of 3.8. It's not going to be a perfect prediction, but it's your best guess. And for our friend who had a high school GPA of 3.35, well, then using this best fitting line, we're going to predict that person's going to end up with a college GPA of 3.44. Now, uh, the person asks you, hey, um, can I count on a college GPA of 3.44? Will you guarantee that to me? And you say, no, no, my friend. Correlation does not imply causation. While high school and college GPA are influenced by similar factors, um, your high school GPA does not determine your college GPA. Uh, and also you point out, keep in mind that those people who came to our university with a high school GPA of 3.35 uh, did not necessarily get a 3.44 at our university. There was some spread. That is, there's going to be some error here. Well, the person you talk to says, well, what if you drew a better regression line? And you're like, no, you can't draw a better regression line uh, than this one because it minimizes the distance between itself and all the points. So as long as you're similar to everyone who uh, took the survey, this is the best way to go. And here, actually, you can either use this best fitting line, this regression line, to make predictions, or you can use a, a linear equation that uh, represents that line. 